<laughs> Here today we have the latest product for law enforcement from Omni Consumer Products, OCP. See, it features a bright colored body so it can be clearly seen. An independently thinking gun, which takes the decision out of his hands, if that's any good. And it becomes its own police car. Suggested retail price? More than what anybody can afford. Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, <clears throat> and today, continuing with our Legacy Month, we're taking a look at another character that did originate from the Generation 1 era. This is Point Blank and his Target Master partner, Peacemaker. And of course, as we stated, he was from the Generation 1 era. Here's his Generation 1 toy. And right away you can definitely notice a lot of the similarities and even a few differences from the original. <clears throat> the original came with an extra accessory in the form of his engine, which could double as a shield for the robot. Of course, another big change <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm suffering a little bit through a cold here. It is definitely the fact the legs are fused together with a single piece of plastic in there. Whereas, as you can see on the newer toy, that is non-existent. But there is also a cosmetic change. I want you to take a good look at their heads. The Generation 1 head has the dual antenna on there, which is a classic look. But obviously when they redesigned him for the modern audience, they decided to ditch the antenna in favor of just a singular horn in the center. So, minor, th minor change, but... Some fans may be a little upset by the fact that they didn't try to make it look a little closer to the original. Now, as I stated earlier, he is a Target Master from the Generation 1 era. <clears throat> For the benefit of those who weren't around at that point or don't understand what a Target Master is, a Target Master is a Transformer who's been bonded to a character that for that wears a special suit and transforms into a special gun that only that robot can use. It's sort of like the signature guns that have been seen in some of the James Bond films, except this one is an independent character. So like what Larry mentioned in the opening about an independent thinking gun, he is telling the truth. When the character is in gun mode, it can act on its own accord, regardless of what the robot wants. Now, while that may be helpful in vehicle mode, as it would allow the gun to be a turret of sorts, and allow the robot to concentrate on driving or flying, depending on the alt mode, in the robot mode, that tends to be something that gets in the way, since... The robot and the gun may have a different agenda. Now, while a lot of this really wasn't covered in a lot of the media, so the only thing that really covered them much was the final few episodes of the original Generation 1 cartoon. And they really didn't go into it very much about the Target Masters. And they were never covered in the Japanese series due to the fact that the Target Masters were never released in Japan. So, 
That would be, these guys would have been our American exclusives. Them and the smaller Target Masters that came out in 1988. As the big ones here, like Point Blank, came out in 87. Alright, let's get the old one, the old toy out of the way. And we'll take a look here at our newest one. Uh, Point Blank as a character, he was in the Generation 1 continuity. He was functioning as an enforcer. He was one that didn't talk much since he believed words caused more harm than weapons. And when you look at today's media, and our social media in particular, Point Blank may have a point. His partner here, Peacemaker, is a former Nebulon law enforcement officer. He does his best to try to get point, to get Peacemaker, I mean Point Blank, to be more accommodating. And according to the More Than Meets the Eye guidebooks, he was making some efforts at improving how his robot partner interacts with everybody else. But of course, the more than meets the eye guides also imply that Point Blank here is the leader of the Autobot Target Masters. Alright, let's take a look now at his lone accessory. And his lone accessory, of course, is Peacemaker. This is Peacemaker in his gun form. Of course, to transform him, all you do is you take the barrel here, and we would fold it up on top like so. And then this darker colored section can be folded outwards. And then there you have Peacemaker in his robot form. Well, not exactly a robot since he's basically an organic being wearing a special suit. And for comparison's sake, here is Generation 1 Peacemaker. So as you can see, he's a... Uh, the newer one is slightly smaller than the original, but they both share the same characteristic in the fact that they are a non-posable figure. But I do like the fact that they, gave, that they at least put a little more paint applications on the newer one. So it does make him look a little better. Alright, now let's take a look at Point Blank and take a look at his articulation. His head does turn from side to side. It's a bit stiff. And the head is on a bit of a ball joint, so it will rock up and down a little bit, but not much. His arms can be raised out about so far, and they do rotate at the shoulder all the way. You can bend his arm at the elbow, not quite 90 degrees due to some of this kibble on his arm, and they get in the way of the tire. In the ways, the way his arm is set up, he does have a slight swivel, but it's not quite enough to really call it like G.I. Joe Battle Grip, since it doesn't go any further over here, but you can raise it out that way a bit. He can be twisted at his hips, so he does have some dance moves going for him. You can spread his legs apart into a full splits. He does have a pretty good thigh cut. You can raise his leg at the hip a little more than 90 degrees, and you can bend him at the knee even greater than 90 degrees. And you do have articulation at the ankle. So all in all, you have a fairly good amount of articulation, just not quite as good as what's standard. And before we transform Point Blank, let's show off a little bonus feature. 
you can store the gun on him. Just raise that clear piece on the back side. And then you can attach Peacemaker on the back. And there you go. It's always nice to have a little weapon storage on these guys. That way you're not forced to just put them in with their guns always out. Alrighty, now to transform, once again we gotta go to his backside. Raise up this clear portion a bit so you can use it to help pull open his back. Then you're gonna fold the head so it goes down inside. And then we'll close the back up, but keep the clear piece hanging loose. Because we're gonna fold it down so that it goes down, make some slight adjustments so it lines up nicely with the front windshield. Then of course, once we've done that, we'll come back here to his back. And we're gonna rotate the arms so they come up like so. <clears throat> and then you're gonna Fold them in at the elbow, but also get it to shift this red portion. You want that to go underneath. Kind of look like that. And then next is going to involve rotating the arms up and shifting the elbow portion to go inside the arm. And then getting the arm itself to come on and form alongside the alongside the larger part of the arm to form the hood of the car. Kind of like that. Takes a little bit of maneuvering to get everything in the right place. But it's kind of once everything's in position, then you can fold the arms up and connect them together to form the front end of the car. Then we'll come down here. You're going to raise up the windscreen a bit. So we have a little clearance. I'm going to twist him around at the hips a bit. And then we're going to take these little flappy pieces that are alongside his waist. They want you to adjust them outwards. They have a little post that protrudes out so that they can connect in there underneath the arms. But of course they want you to keep it loose at the moment. Because the next thing you're going to do is you're going to fold up the legs. <clears throat> and get them around. Once you've got the legs around, then you can adjust this little flappy piece to get it in position. And then bring the feet down to get everything secured and in position. It looks more complicated than it really is, folks. It's not really that hard to get into position. Then you can close the canopy up again. Make some final adjustments to the legs. And then there you have it. <clears throat> Point blank is in his car mode. And, of course, he does have room on here for his Target Master partner. But unlike the Generation 1 version, 
This one has two little posts protruding on the arms, and they connect back here to the bits of the spoiler. <coughs> so the gun sits further back than what it does on the Generation 1 original. But all in all, it is a rather nice looking version of a classic character. So now we get to my thoughts. <clears throat> this one's a little bit of a mixed bag. I mean, after all, it is inspired from a Generation 1 toy, and of course I'm happy for that, because it does bring another somewhat minor character back to the forefront again. But I know there's going to be a few Generation 1 purists that are not going to be happy with the changes. So, I mean, the robot head is somewhat different from the original. The position of the gun on the vehicle mode is different. And he doesn't have the exposed engine that could double as a shield. But if you can get over those hang-ups with him... This is actually a pretty good toy to have. It actually transforms relatively easily between both modes, and it doesn't look too bad. So either way, well, I'll, as I said, as a G1 fan, it's a mixed bag, but if you can overlook those flaws, you'll find yourself with a rather decent figure. And that's my review of the Legacy version of Point Blank and his partner Peacemaker. I hope you all enjoyed it. And remember, if you enjoy the content that we feature heavily on this channel, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.